Breath of the Wild is a game in the Legend of Zelda series released by Nintendo on the Wii U and Nintendo Switch in early 2017. From the very beginning of its development, Breath of the Wild aimed to challenge past tropes in the Zelda series and redefine what a Zelda game could be. This risky decision required massive changes to be made to what many called the Zelda formula, including gameplay, tone, mechanics, and presentation. Considering that Nintendo was making changes to something that fans already loved, it was no surprise when many of these decisions were initially received with complaints by fans. Most of them are able to get over it pretty quickly, however, because Nintendo was quick to show off and explain how all these new mechanics worked. There was one change, however, that divided fans more than any of the rest. The sound. Ever since the first game in the series, exploring the world has felt and sounded like an adventure. The music was bombastic and triumphant. It had melodies that stuck with the player and made them feel just how Link felt. Courageous. This is what Breath of the Wild's overworld sounds like. Despite the vast, open world it plays in, the overworld music in Breath of the Wild is scarce to say the least. In the past, Zelda game's overworld music has felt similar in mood to their main theme. However, Breath of the Wild is different. Here's the main theme of Breath of the Wild. It feels very much like a main theme to a traditional Zelda game. This is a stark contrast to Admittedly, I could see how many could consider to be a downgrade from But upon a closer inspection, I think that Breath of the Wild's music is what ultimately makes the game feel as free as it does. At the end of the day, there's no denying that isn't exactly courageous, but I don't think it should be. Link doesn't feel courageous in this game. He feels lost and the music represents this well while also helping to guide the player through the world. Before I dive into the music, I feel like I need to first address the overall sound design. Ultimately, the reason that this game feels like it has a weaker overworld score than other Zelda games is because it does, but it does for a good reason. Breath of the Wild simply opted to put more emphasis on the sound design than the music. This is not to say that the music is lacking, far from it. I'm simply saying that the environmental sounds are much more prominent in the mix than in past games, and the music was written to leave room for it. In past games, the audio team could use this amazing music as a crutch for the sound design. The sound design in past Zelda games wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. This explains why the decision to switch the main focus over to sound effects instead of music worried fans. If Zelda has great music and just okay sound effects, then why focus on the sound effects and backpedal on the music? Fans didn't understand just how amazing the sound design in game would be. Unlike past games, the audio in Breath of the Wild serves a far greater purpose, to guide. This is a vastly superior alternative to hand-holding, something fans were getting sick of. If you keep struggling against a guardian, no guide will pop up to tell you what you're doing wrong. Other than more damage, the only positive reinforcement you get is through sound. Listen to what happens when the player eventually learns that they can cut a guardian's legs off. Did you hear that synth note play? Breath of the Wild has these subtle audio hints everywhere. Stronger weapons make a shimmery sound, headshots make a special noise, and cooking better dishes makes the cooking fanfare more exciting. If you doubt how strong this effect can be at times, I invite you to consider this clip. Was there any doubt in your mind that this was an enemy? Was there any part of you that thought maybe it's friendly? There's nothing inherently threatening about its appearance. It's simply a robot in a grass field that changes colors when it looks at you. But thanks to the music, it is clear that this is not just any enemy, but one that you should probably start running from. All of the mini-boss musics in this game are great, and they all contain hints similar to this. From the Malduga score that jumps in intensity when the boss is vulnerable, to the unpredictable blaring 5-4 Hinox track that warns you of its wild clumsiness, to the towering talus theme that samples mining sounds in the background as a hint that mining tools do extra damage. Also, the game makes sure that defeating these feels satisfying by giving all of these the ability to end smoothly.
Breath of the Wild manages to convey immense amounts of important information in such a way that it is at times subtle enough to be unnoticeable, only affecting the player subconsciously. Take for example the stealth mechanic. You can increase your stealth by various means, and doing so allows the player to sneak up on monsters or wildlife more easily. Your level of stealth is displayed in the HUD at all times by default. The sound designers had a field day with this mechanic. Instead of simply ducking the audio to match the stealth level, they actually recorded all of Link's movement fully three times. Once hastily, again calmly, and once more quietly. When you sneak in this game, you aren't just hearing a quiet footstep, you're hearing a sneaky footstep. The sound of Link's sword rustling against his shield isn't just quieter, it's less violent because Link, and by extension the sound designers, were being more cautious. Additionally, when you crouch to move more stealthily, the music ducks to ensure that you can monitor both your own sound effects and the sound effects of the world around you. This meticulous care that this game gives to Foley is mind-boggling, and it only gets crazier the more you think about it. There are so many different combinations of movement Foley for Link that I have a hard time believing that every combination has been heard. Seriously, just look at all the variables at play here. These all can impact the sounds of Link's movement. Furthermore, each variable has a pool of several recordings it will pick from at random, Instead of pointing out how amazing and detailed this Foley system is, I will instead point out that even under the exact same conditions, even assuming that each pool only consists of two options, the odds of ever hearing the same footstep twice are over one in a billion. Furthermore, these probably aren't even all the variables, these are just the ones I could come up with. I also didn't account for effects, like adjusting levels relative to the camera's position, or adding reverb in places like shrines. The Foley for Link's movements in this game is simply immaculate. Link's movements aren't the only thing that received this level of polish, however. The environment alone is as detailed orally as it is visually. It seems like everything in this game makes noise down to the fish and the bugs. Because of that, every location sounds different. You can tell which way the wind is blowing by the sound alone. The sound of wind moving through the grass and trees varies based on the type of plant. The bird song comes from actual birds that, again, vary by region. Filters are activated and deactivated when you enter and exit buildings or caves. There is a reason so many blind runs have been done at this game. The sound design is strong enough that at times it can stand on its own without any aid from the visuals. So then, with sound design this prominent, how do you go about scoring a game like this? A traditional Zelda score would be a bit overbearing here. So much of the game is spent exploring that having constant exploration music would get annoying. Besides, Bombastic music would completely overpower the sounds of the world they spent so much time and effort developing. Furthermore, the composer also has to worry about adaptive transitions between tracks. This game's overworld has no loading zones. You can run from corner to corner with no break in gameplay. Everything has to be able to change on the fly. If the hardest part about game scoring is unpredictability, then Breath of the Wild must have been one of the hardest games to score. Ultimately, the composers decided to prominently feature the piano and focused on scoring based on things they knew they could predict, such as temperature, geographical location, and time of day. Slowly, a score was put together that was based not on Link, like in past Zelda games, but on the world around Link. Take for example what most considered to be the battle theme. This theme is very technically impressive as it adds all kinds of stingers and modulations depending on how the fight goes. Watch how nearly every hit has a stinger. This isn't just a battle theme, though. In this game, monsters and animals can hunt and be hunted by each other. In this clip, I come up over this cliff just as a pack of wolves kill a fox. Did you hear how the same song played even though the wolves didn't know I was there? There is no danger for Link in this circumstance. The reason we are hearing this song is because there is danger in the world around him. Scoring based on environment resulted in a score that was wildly immersive. Much like the sound design, Nothing about the overworld music stands out, which is a good thing. The way the score is done is that they wrote ambient tracks for each location in the overworld. However, you will likely never hear the track played in game the same way you will hear it on the OST. This is because each motion is played in a random order after a random amount of time. This allows for easy transitions during the silence in between. Even if by chance the player spends a long amount of time running between two regions, constantly switching, the game will be able to play back music that makes sense, some from one region, some from the other. One of the most obvious times consistent music is played in the overworld is when you're on horseback. There could be several reasons for this, such as that the world noises would be harder to hear over the sound of the wind and the horse, 
the player is likely to be more interested in getting from one point to another quickly, or that riding a horse is more rhythmic. Already, this game's music is starting to sound more coherent than many people give it credit for, but we're just getting started. Let's move on and look at the music in this game that is similar to the music in past games. Towns, for one, each have their own unique music with unique instrumentation to represent the town's overall aesthetic. Each town also has a day theme and a night theme, which it transitions between smoothly twice per day. This type of track is fundamentally different from the type of track mentioned before that plays randomly throughout the overworld. Not only were they written and implemented differently, but they were made to serve different purposes. The town music is all diegetic. Remember earlier how I said that the audio in this game is your guide? Well, in the overworld, the sound effects are your guide, so the music leaves it room. With towns, however, the music is your guide, playing faintly whenever the player is nearby, guiding them into town. It might not seem like that big a deal, but consider which of the two are more enticing to you. Wandering randomly when suddenly a blue sword lady interrupts your progress for the hundredth time to tell you that you're near a town, or alternatively, walking randomly until you suddenly start to hear music coming from around the bend. Breath of the Wild is a lonely game. The lively towns in this game are lovely, but they are few and far in between. Just like the music. By depriving the player of both for long periods of time, their focus will be absolutely captivated at the first sign of either, but they won't feel like they're being guided. They'll feel like they're exploring. Sometimes, however, the game is much more literal about using music to guide the player. Meet Cass, my favorite character, a bird bard who can be found playing music all throughout Hyrule. While wandering, the player will hear his faint, distant playing, because the score leaves room for it, and if they trace it back to him, he will sing them a song containing a riddle that when solved, presents a shrine. Rewarding the player for following their ears like this will inspire them to listen even more carefully in the future. Cass can also be found at Stables, where in addition to the Stables theme, he can be heard playing this melody. Zelda fans will recognize this as a Pona's theme, very fitting for a horse stable. The Zelda series has been including musical easter eggs like this for a long time, and upon hearing Breath of the Wild's new music direction, I was initially afraid that it wouldn't appear. However, over a quarter of Breath of the Wild's soundtrack is made up of motifs from past games, oftentimes slowed down and spread out like the house theme or the Temple of Time. By far the most impressive instance of this, in my opinion, is Hyrule Castle. The track that plays in Hyrule Castle is one of the few that you hear the beginning of, and the drop lines up with when you fling open these doors and step through. The track features Ganon's theme, Zelda's lullaby, the main theme, and the castle theme. I'd say these choices were pretty appropriate given the circumstance. The track has two versions that it fades between based on whether you're inside or outside. My favorite use of motifs in this game is the Horse God song, which is a seamless combination of opponent's song, which, again, can be heard at stables being played by Cass, and the Great Fairy Fountain motif. This combination just makes so much sense in this circumstance, and it's cool to see how well they actually fit together. When you look back at the beginning of the game, it's crazy how much of the plot is revealed in the music alone. Listen to the theme that plays when the old man appears. It contains the same melodic motif from the King's theme in Wind Waker and part of the castle theme from A Link to the Past. This hints to the player early on about the old man's true identity. The cutscene where he reveals himself and tells Link about the events from a hundred years ago is accompanied by a track that essentially does the same thing. It starts by playing the old man's theme in full, which is the rest of the castle theme. It then plays Ganon's theme when it introduces Ganon, the sound of a guardian when they show the guardians, Zelda's lullaby when they show Zelda, the main theme when they show Link, etc. By attaching so many motifs to so many things early on, the player feels an odd sense of deja vu when encountering that same motif again later in the game. This too is exactly how Link feels after losing his memory. I'm sure Link is feeling a strong sense of deja vu himself throughout the game, so it's cool to see the music tell the story like this. Another instance where the music is used to develop the story is in the Divine Beasts. The way the beasts work is consistent across all four. Solve various puzzles to activate all the terminals, then fight the boss that killed the champion piloting the beast a hundred years ago. Each beast has a horizontally mixed adaptive score that builds upon itself as more terminals are activated. Hidden in each of these scores are battling Morse code signals that spell SOS and SAD. 
By listening to these tracks closely and comparing them to each other, it's possible to tell how each of the champions did against the Blights relative to each other. This use of adaptivity urges the player forwards, keeps them emotionally invested, and prevents ear fatigue. I love that the game chose not to throw tracks like these in a part of the game that require listening closely to your surroundings. They instead put them in places where there isn't much else to listen to. At the end of the day, it's simply not fair to compare the music and sound design of Breath of the Wild to other Zelda games, because they had different goals in mind. Breath of the Wild marked the first time a Zelda game went for a complimentary score, and it worked very well. All I can really ask for is more variety at times. There were some instances that seemed like they could have had their own unique music that didn't, such as while sailing, scaling large cliff faces, paragliding, or during thunderstorms. Breath of the Wild's audio was as revolutionary as its gameplay, and I can't wait to see what they do with Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs>